this morning. And I have uh, Michael Aguanda, who is a governance expert. We have uh, Ambrose Weda, who is uh, an advocate. And last but not least, uh, Senate um, um, uh, from the Senate, and that is Irungu Kangata, Senator for Moranga County. But first, let's look at that story regarding the IEBC. On a chilly Monday morning of April 17, 2018, the country woke up to the news of things falling apart at the anniversary towers, which houses the poll agency. Of the remaining six at the commission, three were announcing their exit following the footsteps of Rosaline Akombe. The commission chair has failed to be the steady and stable hand that steers the ship in difficult times. Only the chairman, Wanyonyi Wafula Chebukati, and two other commissioners, Moya Bolu and Abdi Gulie, remained. However, while dismissing a petition challenging the legality of the current IEBC composition, Justice Wilfrida Okwanyi ruled that a vacancy in the commission does not invalidate its composition and that nothing bars the commission from conducting October senatorial by-election in Migori County. It was also ruled that Vice Chair Connie Miner, Commissioners Ambassador Paul Krugat and Margaret Mochanya, who announced their resignations at a news conference, did not follow the right procedure as they never tendered their resignations to the president, who is the appointing authority. This therefore technically means they are still in office. When contacted for a comment, IBC communication manager Andrew Limo told KTN the commissioners have since returned all the commission property they had in their possession but could not confirm whether they still receive their salaries since the commissioners are paid directly from the Treasury's consolidated fund. The ruling has now given IEBC the green light to conduct the forthcoming by-elections. It is, however, not clear whether the trio can now sneak back to the commission and continue working if they so wish. Duncan Hemba, KTN News. All right, so that's where we are. And let me start with you, Ambrose Weda. And uh, let's start with the constitution of now, the commission, given that those three may have resigned. Uh, the signs show that they resigned yes. from what the statement they made. Yes. However, we do not have uh, confirmation from the appointing authority, which yes. is the pres president, yes. whether they actually tendered in their resignation. Yes, I think uh, uh, the learned judge did not appreciate two things. One, there is actual resignation and there is constructive resignation. Actual basically means you comply with the role, you write a letter to the president. Mm -hmm. But by conduct, you can be deemed to have left the job. Our law, our constitution and laws also prohibit anybody from being held into servitude, being forced to work in certain places. So when you say, I have left, and by conduct you walk out, technically you You've are, resigned. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that decision is... A Puritan way of looking at the Constitution, saying the Constitution strictly interpreted in a positivist manner, you have not resigned. There must have been a letter, and I, I hope the President wrote and said, I've not so an affidavit saying they have not written to me. But when all is said and done, the commissioners resigned by conduct, by word. And if there's a letter still outstanding, it is a formality. We saw them. So they cannot sneak back. One, there'll be issues of credibility. Two, they have left by word and by, and by conduct. Action. So the judge should have said, whereas they have not complied with this aspect, all indications show that they have, show that they have left. But okay. to interpret it in a Puritan manner is basically just to bring constitution, uh, confusion and to go against the spirit of the constitution that also allowed resignation. Okay. Uh, Senator Irungu Kangata, you're a lawyer as well. Do you agree with uh, Weda's stand? Yes, I agree. I think the presumption or the, the, the philosophy of the jurisprudence that is housing out of that judgment 
is that, uh, for instance, all contracts should be written. It is not true. We know in law, we have what we call oral contracts, or even what underpins labor law is uh, contract law. And it appreciates instances where uh, one can enter into oral contracts or even uh, disengage in an oral manner. And therefore, when you look at the totality of the circumstances surrounding IBC, I would agree that indeed those commissioners resigned. Because one, they made a public pronouncement. Number two, they don't attend meetings. They don't at do any business with IBC. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, of all purposes and, 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 and intent, and intense, there's no they, they have resigned. And of course, we'll assume that their salaries are also not uh, being uh, given to them by virtue of the fact they resigned. Michael Agwanda, where does that leave us? The Crickler Commission gave a recommendation that the IEBC must be ready and in place and set to roll at least minimum two years before the election. Here we are, we may have time now for the four years, but we still seem to be dilly-dallying. In this case, the buck stops with Parliament and Senate. I think if they had pushed this investigation, and I saw Senate had invited uh, the IBC chair and his two commissioners, uh, I think twice or three times in just the last three months, and actually there are a number of senators that requested the chairman to resign. But he said no over his dead body. And uh, any time anybody in government says no, I remember Kinyumunya, um, you know, Honorable Kinyumunya, when he was swearing pilot, that he cannot swearing resign, that he will not resign, and mm. then just um, within a short time he had to resign. What, where we are, is so bad. Uh, literally, somebody can take this matter to court of appeal. And as the two gentlemen have said, we were good in law that you are deemed to have resigned even by mere absconding duty. If you absconded duty, say, for a month or two, you can be written to and told you've absconded duty and due to the abscondment of duty, you're not allowed to come back to work. Now, these people were in the public glare. I think what the judge was doing was to play a populist judgment and to save the face of this country. Mm -hmm. Might not be in law, but that's exactly. She was actually doing an activist job of ensuring that the by-elections that are there, one just took place about two days ago, that they will go on without are having to put uh, the electorates into the, um, the, the political jargons and also the theatrics of IBC by allowing that to go on. And the only way she could allow that to go on is to say, by the way, these people did not resign and therefore there is still, the commissioner still stands at six and not just three that is below the quorum as stipulated in the law. So it is so clear that what she wanted to do was to save the face of this country and also to save the face of the three commissioners that are left there. The question is, how long do you want to protect the three commissioners there at the expense of radical surgery that needs to take place at IBC? If I were the chairman of IBC, and including Mr. Chiloba, and including the returning officers, or whatever you call them, the coordinators in the counties, we should have resigned because we did not cost this country just mere hundreds of thousands. We costed this country millions and hundreds of millions that they paid to the lawyers that defended President Uhuru Kenyatta, that was paid to many um, uh, members of parliament and to mm. many senators that have gone to court because the election was not done well. Mm. And let me tell you, Mike, as I conclude on this, any time you see Honorable Raila come together with any leader in this country, the IBC is going home. It is just a matter of time. And it is evident that they were not able to do a proper job. People okay. are still crying. Mm -hmm. I think... This is a time that the president needs to show us serious leadership on this matter of IBC. Okay. Uh, and Sen make sure they go home. Senator, you have been kept busy, you know, with uh, all the issues that have been coming up in terms of the sugar issue. Now we have rice uh, that's coming up, and we certainly do know that our legislators are working. However, when do we deal with the IEBC, in your opinion? Because the later we leave it, the more likely we'll end up where we were. We need to solve this now. Yes, I think there is some dilemma. You have some commissioners who insist they, they won't go home and somehow they are protected by the constitution because 
sending home a commissioner of a constitutional commission is quite hard, it's quite tedious. You need to establish certain uh, commissions, certain procedures, which are quite a daunting task, and therefore I would imagine it will not be a simple thing. Of course, there's a way uh, we can remove them as a parliament, uh, but on the other hand, we are waiting to be given uh, the green light by our, our bosses. We are yet to know what is the party's position, what is the government position on the IBC. And, uh, well, so what is your position? Well, uh, personally, I have no position. You know, my work Senator, is Senator, you can't follow. say you don't have a position because you're, you're there as a legislator. Honestly, how can you not have a position? Oh, no, no. You see, the point is... Are, yeah. are you then telling us that as a leader, you basically are uh, puppeteered? No, you know my work as a whip is to do what government wants me to do, right? I hold brief for government. Is that it? that is true, but I in regards to IEBC, government. what is your position now? No, Senator? I hold brief for government. I, I so what, what is what, the what, what is the government's what, brief? The government is yet to tell us what we should do, what motion we should bring before the floor of the house. Yes, I, from where I sit, incidentally. Yeah? Uh, although this has nothing to do with the government position. Yeah? Uh, you know, in, in, in uh, electoral cycles, we have what we call an election. Immediately after an election, there is what we call an audit. That is, after you have done a general election, as a commission, you're supposed to sit down, you do an audit. This was the problem, this was the problem, and then you start preparing for the next election, taking into account the loopholes that you noted there. So, at this stage, I would imagine we need a fully constituted commission. Why? For two things. Number one, uh, you need to, take it to do the audit, taking into account those observations you are going to note. They are going to inform you as you prepare for the next election. And therefore, personally, I would urge the government to come up with a policy statement. So that if at all we are supposed to kick out these people, we kick them out, and then we start preparing for a new commission that is going to do the audit and then prepare for the next elections cycle. Mm -hmm. Number two, and most importantly, there are some rumors which has to be confirmed that we may go into a referendum. Uh, again, uh, that's another quite problematic and, and you see, that's, that's why we need to be sorting this out now. Because mm -hmm. should we go to a referendum, do we have an IEBC that we would be happy with? Secondly, there is also the uh, division that they're supposed to be coming up with. But let me come to you, Ambrose Weda. Yes. One of the questions that has been raised, and this yes. has been carrying on right from the point of vetting yes. and the appointment of the chair, is the yes. competence of the chair. We've just seen from some of the commissioners resigning, yes. Yes. Uh, raising the question and saying or using the example that he has been unable to steer the ship now i think uh, let's get this thing clear one an unprepared disorganized ibc is a tool in elections it's a strategy it all depends with who will benefit and who will lose so it's not that everybody wants an organized ready prepared there are those who IBC. thrive in chaos yes number two please let us also get this clear by the time somebody is becoming chairman, IBC, or commissioner, it is usually predetermined. So that the ceremony is a theater. It's a theater that is organized, arranged, but you cannot become chairman unless the president knows you want so and so or so and so. The others, you fall by the way. So these things, they are not uh, just that you by go chance. there. By chance, you go there with your books and then certificates and whatever, no. So whether it is competence or incompetence, it is usually predetermined because somebody will benefit from the organization or disorganization. Now, the question of the commissioners, or you don't have to kick them out. Honorable Kiriako Tobiko was not kicked out, but the president needed him out of that office which had protection. He was given a job. There are others too. We can name quite a number of them. We are told now we want you to move here. You remember Grace Kaindi, police officer? She even resisted. <laughs> I'm not going. Uh, some of us advisors said, Madam, when the chips are down and the big boys have said, move, it is safer and better to move. So if somebody is interested in reorganizing the IBC and that the, the team that exists needs to leave, Chabukati can be an ambassador somewhere in uh, Are you then France. saying, whether are you suggesting that the IEBC has been left as it is by design for... Yes, 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 by design, by design. 
It is not that nobody seems to care about it. We have better issues to deal with than IEBC. That is why it is not being dealt with. And so that by the time we are about to go for elections, there's short time. And that short time, you get in an IEBC like we got in the Chebukati IEBC that had very little time, lack of knowledge, disorganized. <laughs> and if even me, whether I would benefit from the science organization, if I had power, I would keep them. <laughs> so that I go and win. The rest we meet in the Supreme Court. But if you look at it at that, a presidential election was nullified, majorly due to the disorganization mm. claim on the basis that IEBC did not do certain fundamental things. The best thing to do if I was in their shoes was to say, bring other people to do it. Either way, the job of IEBC is damned. You do it, you are damned. You don't do it, you are damned. Okay, Michael yes, Agwanda, the question here then would be, is uh, changing the faces of IEBC really the solution? It's not the first time that we are saying that these people are not able to do their job. Uh, and if what Weda is saying is true, then it is a matter of concern if they are disorganized, quote-unquote, uh, by design. People do change so that they can do something called physical restructuring. And by doing physical restructuring in an employment setup, what you're trying to do is let people that are not of great value to uh, the organization step aside and bring people that comes in with new energy, uh, new emerging technologies, uh, new ideas to move the company to a different level. In this case, what we're saying is when you have the 2013 IBC and you still have, I'm saying IBC because the only thing that was changed was actually the commissioners. You left everybody else that was conducting the election. And then you had one also bungled up in 2017. What you're seeing here is a consistency mm -hmm. of impunity, impunity of rigging, impunity of being bought left, right, and center. Michael, I was in a tallying center, county tallying center in Omar Bay, and were counting votes and there was this returning officer from Suda, Suba South who came with uh, the results and if I put the result before us and uh, once he put the result before us because we had so much time we started tabulating and adding these figures up they're using excel that is supposed to when you add any figure into the column it's supposed to give you the you know the, sum, the summation automatically mm -hmm. well this guy had a difference of about 4,000 votes. And we asked him, but how did this come about? And the guy said, well, I just put the figures. But he said, you must have changed the figures. You know what the returning officer said? Yes, we can see the anomalies. This is not supposed to be, I think it was changed. But gentlemen, we've just signed it. It means you'll have to go to court so that this thing is changed at the courts. Okay, we cannot change it. Yet they changed the numbers. Now, that kind of impunity, I'm just giving you an example. It was realized in many parts of this country where people are saying, these are the, not the numbers. But people did not, most of them did not have the ability to go to court. When you have those caliber of the officers running IBC and you're thinking that they will still run IBC in 2022 if I wanted to run for any position I will say let it go for the people that uh, Weda is talking about the people that want that confusion for their own uh, interest Benefit. if honor right honorable Ryla <coughs> want to be the president of this country he cannot be the president of this country if those people are still in that office if somebody else even Ruto honorable Ruto and DP Ruto wants to be the president of this country if those very people are still in the office he will not be the president unless he buys all of them but and if, you know mm. if that is a state we are in then the question from, is from what, from what Weda was was explaining if that is any I don't know if you buy that as part of the way it is then uh, what you're saying is partly true in the sense that they can be president if indeed that confusion favors them that's what I say so it, unless, it does favor somebody unless it favors them unless he buys all of them mm -hmm. because I think IBC <laughs> in that case is in there to be uh, for the high basically. Mm -hmm. If you're the high speed, we've seen more issues in IBC portal and their computers where people have been given nomination certificate. They go and it is inserted into IBC, IBC computers and the very IBC computer or, or experts comes and says, look, somebody remove your name from the computers and uh, you need to pay me something okay. so that we return it. Senator, so that. Uh, Senator, let me come to you. And if, if that be the case, I don't know whether you buy what the two gentlemen no, are saying. I don't. And if, if that be the case, do we even need to go for 
for elections then? I mean, at this rate then, it seems like the die is already cast. No, I disagree 100%. First, I'm a little bit uh, surprised. I thought my friend is in Jubilee. He <laughs> appears to have left Jubilee. <laughs> <laughs> What would qualify him from being in Jubilee? What disqualifies him from being in Jubilee? No, because he's coming here to attack the government, to insinuate the government. How has he attacked the government? No, he's saying that the government benefits through the disorganization of the this time, it is whoever. Yeah. Okay. And uh, contrary to what you say, these people don't take bribes. The only thing is, even you or you or you, 